Welcome to the audiobook of The Art of Spiritual Healing by H.P. Jeffrey. This profound work delves into the timeless principles of well-being and self-healing, offering a holistic approach to nurturing your mind, body, and spirit. As we journey through these pages, you'll discover powerful techniques and insights that empower you to tap into your inner strength, heal yourself from within, and achieve a state of profound well-being. Whether you are new to the concepts of spiritual healing or seeking to deepen your understanding, this audiobook serves as a guide to transforming your life through the art of spiritual healing. By the end of this journey, you'll have the tools to create a more balanced, healthy, and harmonious life. If you find value in this audiobook, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more insightful content and updates. Now let's begin our exploration into the art of spiritual healing. Greetings, dear listeners. Welcome to an enlightening voyage into the realm of spiritual healing by H.P. Jeffrey. Spiritual healing is the work of the spirit. I of myself can do nothing. It is the Father who does the work. Our primary approach in healing is not to the appearance of disease, but to spirit, God. We are to disregard the cries of mortal man and heed the word of God, the spirit within. Moses recognized this law and wrote, In the beginning, God. At the start of every treatment, God. We aren't treating the patient or their disease. In fact, we aren't doing anything. We can do nothing. It's the spirit that accomplishes the work. All we can do is turn to the spirit. This turning involves looking away from disease towards the cause of all health. Our work is always to elevate our consciousness to God, the giver of health. When we hear the distressed cries of our fellow man, our natural inclination is to want to help. Often this desire is to display some apparent power of mortal man, which does not truly exist. All power comes from God. God is all there is. Beside Him there is none other. There is one being, one intelligence, one substance, one form, God. When attention is focused on Him, light shines forth from darkness. When thine eye is single, then thy whole body shall be full of light. Our eyes must focus singularly on healing, on health, and on the giver of health. We are to look beyond appearances, for they are unreal. The things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. By faith we understand that the very worlds were framed by the Word of God. The Word of God is the creator of all things. It is the real. The most successful healer dedicates their conversation to describing the spirit, the reality. Every case of disease and illness stems from vain imaginations. The light of truth resides in every person. It is the light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Within their inner nature, every person is conscious of their divinity and knows the truth. We are to appeal to this inner being and knowledge, calling it forth into expression. Spirit is always present in man. It cannot be put into him from the outside, for it is always within. Turning to the Spirit within ourselves causes the word of healing to quicken within us, allowing us to speak a word in season to him who is weary, and he shall go free. We are not dependent upon certain worded formulas or affirmations. The right word will always be given to the one who keeps their attention upon the Most High. God is all. The true being of man is God manifest. Every case that comes to us for healing challenges our knowledge of God indwelling. We shall give our attention to this inner man of God. Be still and know that I am God. Healing is not our own doing, but the work of God. We must be careful to remember this at all times, lest we become prideful in the work accomplished through us and lose consciousness of its giver. Spiritual healing is the work of spirit. The greatest healer who brings about the quickest results is the one who knows that they have nothing to do and does nothing. They abide by the truth and in the truth. I am the Lord thy God, there is none other. Healing is knowing this truth. In the light of this knowledge all disease vanishes. There is no disease. All is health, harmony, peace, wisdom, understanding, and their giver. Make the truth real to yourself, and it will be real to your patient. Our conversation shall be in heaven. We shall walk on the heights. God is good, perfect without disease. Man is good, perfect, without disease. All else is delusion, a disturbing dream. Healing is the awakening out of the sleep of disease. It is beholding the true self. There are no miracles. 
All is a natural working under the direction of definite spiritual laws. God is light. In Him there is no darkness at all. There is no shadow cast by turning. In God there is no turning. Disease is turning away from the light. Health is a return. To the light. It is unnecessary to give formulations to the patient. There is no healing in mere words. They are only vain repetitions unless they are given by the Spirit. That which arises from within us is from the Spirit. Many Bible quotations are absolute truth and are safe to give where the Spirit is known. We should weigh well the words we speak, ensuring they are charged with the fullness of truth, not half-truths. It is written that Jesus went about doing good. His eye was single to the good. His conversation was good, and his deeds were good. The power of healing lies in knowing the omnipotent good. Healing is sacred, and the healer must be consecrated. Healing is not for display. It is ministering because one is called to do so by the Spirit and can do nothing else. The healer's work is sacred. Their thoughts and conversations are filled with truth. Many are called, but few are chosen. All are called to the work of healing but only a few who go far enough to cross themselves and magnify the tongue of the wise is health. To him who orders his conversation aright, I will show the salvation of God. Lesson 2. Spiritual Healing by H. B. Jeffrey In this lesson we focus on specific ideas regarding healing. We begin with the liver. We remember that the true spiritual healer's mind gives no heed to the body or the appearance of disease. Their eye is single to the one in whom there is no disease or limitation. However, there is no harm in understanding some aspects of the human mind and organization. But as we progress, we keep our inner eye on perfection so that outer appearances do not enter consciousness. Only with thine outer eye shalt thou behold evil. Only the outer physical eye shall see the appearance. The inner eye shall stay on God. The liver is an organ of purification. Blood, which is there purified, is poured into it from the heart and intestines. The liver represents interior purification. We desire to be clean throughout. Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Our thoughts and feelings within our minds and hearts determine our state. It is unwise to think one way and feel another. A person of integrity thinks and feels the same. An impure bloodstream affects the whole human system. Regret and remorse bring about hardened substances in the liver, which are deposited in the gallbladder, producing gallstones. The liver and intestines are closely connected. What affects the liver will also show up in the intestines. The blood contains fibrin, fats, salts, sugar, and starches. Sugar sweetens the bloodstream. The blood that passes to the heart has. Thinking thoughts of truth causes the blood to become sweet and pure. Truth rejected hardens the liver and retards its action. The cause of this hardening is unknown to medical science, but known to metaphysicians to be in the mind, not in the organ itself. In healing, we deal not with the organ or the mind, but with the spirit. However, as the mind is the medium through which the spirit works, we poise it in such a manner that it harmonizes with spiritual guidance. Every case that presents itself for healing is different from every other. Each case of healing must be handled in the spirit, guided by the unique aspects of each individual. Specific treatments cannot be outlined. Only a general method of procedure can be given. Dwelling in the past affects the rhythm of the liver. Looking away from the past, for now is the acceptable time, can loosen and shake the liver out of its hardened conditions through joy and love. Laughing is good for massaging the liver. Joy produces strength and joy comes from love and knowing the truth. Ideas in the mind must be put into action. Love the good, think the good, and act the good. Belief in good is not sufficient. We must act the good. Stir up the gift within you. See the gift of your own unique abilities. Joy brings strength. It places pleasures forever. A love of knowing and doing the truth brings joy. Discrimination must be used in giving truth where the student is not ready. Walking contrary to truth produces disturbances in the gallbladder, liver, and intestines. We cannot deceive our own spirit. We shall not try it. Remaining free from resentment under stress or trial, allows pure sweet blood to flow from the liver to the heart. There shall be a proper amount of sugar in the blood to sweeten it, but not too much or too little. The liver largely regulates the bloodstream, and our blood economy is governed by the liver, which is directed by the mind, and the mind is directed by the spirit. 
Certain diseases of the feet come from impurities lodged in the blood, placed there by impure thoughts. As much as lies within us, we should dwell at peace with all men. Others are growing and will open naturally to the truth when they are hungry enough for it, just as the mouth opens itself to food placed before it when hungry. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after. Righteousness prevails when we avoid criticism towards others, regardless of the plane on which they are manifesting. Sincere individuals will find many functioning on a higher plane, and tolerance is crucial. Treat others as you wish to be treated. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Gently lead those hungry for truth and zealous to share it, before they fully comprehend how to do so. A thorough foundation must precede any superstructure. Headaches, mental dullness, and constipation arise from forcing ourselves or others beyond readiness. Temper zeal with love and wisdom, as great zeal without understanding, sometimes results in tuberculosis. Healers in tune with the spirit sense disturbances in their patients, but disregard the appearance except as suggested by their inner spirit, speaking the word of truth. It shall be given thee what thou shalt say. The word is very nigh unto thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. Lesson 3. Spiritual Healing by H. B. Jeffrey Manifestation Man embodies all that is, the culmination of nature. In trees there are foliage, trunks, branches, leaves. In man there is a tree in reverse. The foliage and the trees themselves correspond to the lungs. The blood comes from the heart and other body parts through the veins and rushes into the lungs through the capillaries, where it contacts light and air, purified and revitalized. Breathing is spirit. In breathing we take in a rarefied spiritual essence beyond atmospheric air. The movement of the lungs affects the whole body, vibrating to the toes. Trees, fish, and man die where there is no movement of air, water, and mind. Natural people have three heart movements to one lung movement while spiritual people have four heart movements to one lung movement. Difference between affections and wisdom causes disturbances in lung and heart rhythms. Lack of wisdom affects the heart. High aspirations and love feed the lungs and heart. According to desire, the blood is fed. The blood is a register of the affections. If the affections are high, we draw out of the invisible the high things. The blood tells us what we find joy in. If the affections are high, the higher essences are drawn in and feed the whole system. The lungs are often referred to as lights. Lung means light. Light corresponds to understanding. When affections are high, light increases and understanding grows. There's always a correspondence between the mind and body movements. As we meditate, breathing changes without conscious thought. Ascending in consciousness deepens and strengthens breathing. We don't just breathe with the lungs, but with the mind. Inspiration in spirit in breathing gives understanding. As the mind lifts, the body becomes lighter. Deep and strong breathing accompanies deep and strong desires. Fear and anxiety disturb lung function. Pneumonia stems from lack of air. Deep breathers have more vitality and expression due to freely flowing, energized blood. The blood depends on the body and mind. Whenever the mind is lifted in the love of truth, finer ethers are drawn into the blood. Joy purifies the bloodstream. Politicians defeated in elections often face pneumonia and kidney issues due to strain and disappointment. Doubt affects the bronchioles, sometimes leading to bronchitis. Lung disturbances are often linked to some form of lust, not necessarily of a lower nature. The heart is a large muscular organ that transforms vital blood to prevent artery bursts. Improper breathing reflects improper thought. Mental blood purity impacts the body. Lust after lower things affects the bloodstream and breathing. Secret desires can cause lung tissue damage and tuberculosis. Treatments involve purity, joy, peace, and satisfaction. Asthma often stems from worry or strong-willed individuals. Scattered forces cause asthma. Treat for receptivity of mind and heart to truth and the spirit. When breath is cut off, fear follows. Healing reestablishes harmony with the spirit. Healing involves awakening the consciousness to spiritual understanding. The healer addresses consciousness, not just the body. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Those with high affections will perceive divinity. Brain. The brain serves as the immediate organ of the soul. It comprises three sections, cerebrum, cerebellum, 
and medulla oblongata. The nervous system extends throughout the body, reaching even to the hair, teeth, and nails via nerves. Subbrains exist across the body, trained by the major brain to perform perfectly subconsciously. They operate autonomously even when consciousness is asleep. Spiritual life flows through the brain, traversing nerves into every part of the body through ductless glands. These glands receive invisible energy, distributing vital power through nerves, clothing the body's spirit. The nerve system mirrors the body's structure. The major brain parts, cerebrum and cerebellum, compose consciousness. The medulla oblongata represents subconscious feelings and controls the physical body. Elevated affections uplift and purify the body. A balanced connection between the cerebrum and cerebellum is crucial for health and perfection. The medulla oblongata and cerebellum, interconnected alongside the cerebrum, present an interrelation. Spiritual energy flows through nerves, impacting nervous exhaustion when contact with the spirit is poor. The doors from the invisible to the visible are through the ductless glands. A balance between the love of truth and the love of good results in overall bodily balance. The eyes reflect the unity of intellect and heart. The left eye mirrors the love of truth, while the right eye embodies the love of good, revealing agreement or discord between intellect and heart. Intellectual eyes are sharp yet cold, whereas spiritual eyes radiate warmth and softness. The love of good is reflected in facial harmony and balance. Materialists believe the brain generates thought, but thoughts actually build the brain. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Thinking truth and embracing goodness restores the brain. The soul shapes the body. Interior affections, carried over or inherited, act independently until a spiritual awakening. The center of these lies within the medulla oblongata. Consciousness resides in the cerebrum. When one naturally embodies truth, their face reflects it. Brain. The driving force behind our actions stems from love for the good, rather than mere intellectual considerations. Doing good should arise from a genuine affection for goodness, not just because it's perceived as virtuous by oneself or others. When individuals act out of a love for the good, their deeds are sincere and meaningful. Impulses traveling through the nerves don't just pass through, but contribute to the formation of the nerves themselves. The body serves as a canvas, displaying the emotions, affections, and loves of the mind. Thinking finds its center in the top brain, while feeling resides in the back brain. Pressure at the back of the head might signal an anxious quest for truth, albeit not for the sake of truth itself, but for personal benefit. Balancing love and wisdom, head and heart, is crucial. Healing addresses states of consciousness and subconsciousness, not just the physical body. A harmonious blend of understanding and affection brings about freedom, harmony, and perfection. The Spleen and Pancreas the spleen, located near the stomach, acts as a purifier for the blood. Elements are added or removed to maintain a healthy balance. Collaborating with the pancreas, they generate white corpuscles, destroy worn-out red corpuscles, and assist the liver in blood purification. The constant purification process keeps the blood vital, clear, sweet, and pure, supporting the body's life. In the pancreas, evidence of fibrin is found transported to the liver for cleansing and strengthening the body. The pancreas removes excess fat from the blood and stores it for emergencies. It works in conjunction with the spleen and liver, reflecting a constant process of purification to sustain vitality and health. These organs correspond to mental states, emphasizing that healing takes place within the mind. True healing involves aligning the mind with truth, interactions and inner balance. While sharing our ideas with others, it's essential to exercise caution. Let the guiding light of Christ within direct our intentions. The spleen remains an enigma to medical understanding. Individuals who perceive and understand goodness but fail to use it are termed spleeny people. A blood analysis from these individuals often reveals a deficiency in white corpuscles, critical for blood movement and foreign substance destruction. Understanding truth is commendable, but its application demands wisdom. When wisdom lacks, the lymphatic system suffers, causing disruption. The mind and body share a symbiotic relationship, where the inner state affects the outer state. A balance of wisdom and love enables righteous living, allowing us to reside in the fourth dimension of balanced thought, speech, feeling, and action. Mind and Healing 
Zeal for spirituality must be tempered with active love towards others. When love is absent, disturbances affect the pancreas, spleen, and liver, causing system-wide disruption. Maintaining contact with the dwelling Christ within the inner self is crucial for harmony. Secret desires dissolve as we earnestly seek God, cleansing impurities through the blood. Despite recognizing, loving, and desiring truth, past notions often bind individuals, hindering progress and causing liver disturbances. Maintain an untroubled heart. Insanity doesn't denote a loss of mind, it's a disrupted balance. Recognition and communication with the mind restore balance and harmony. Mental correspondences to spleen, liver, and pancreas in the mind sift ideas. Harmony in the organism mirrors the harmony within. Maintaining equilibrium. In times of temptation, a reserve of love and wisdom prevents moral breakdowns. This reserve resides in the momentum. Numerous momentums exist in the body, regulating energy, storing substances, and maintaining bodily temperature. Omentum, storing affection and energy, symbolizes love for humanity. Jesus' commandment to love one another resonates through these teachings. Healing of shoulder condition and digestive process. Recent reports suggest healing of a shoulder condition, possibly attributed to newfound faith in the sustaining power of God. With increased confidence and assurance, strength is restored in the shoulders and arms. Digestive system and its correlations. Digestion occurs in stages beginning in the mouth and continuing through the stomach and intestines. Easily digestible elements from the stomach enter the bloodstream, while heavier substances are processed in the intestines. Nutrients extracted from the food build and maintain the body. Every digestive movement has its mental counterpart. Soul hunger and truth. Disturbances in the alimentary canal, especially the intestines, are often due to unfulfilled soul hunger. These individuals seek truth to prosper in their businesses, but may have trouble in lower bowels. They need to be taught fundamental truths to progress spiritually. Teaching truth and dealing with resistance. Some yearn for higher truth but cling to old beliefs. They may resist change, necessitating a firm yet compassionate approach. Purification of secret loves and elimination of negative states of mind are essential for progress. There's no room for compromise. Discernment and Compassion Remaining alert against negative influences is crucial. Compassion is vital, but dealing with evil practices isn't justified. Like Jesus, love sinners but reject their sins. If met with resistance, remove the negative elements from your life. Centering in truth and vigilance. Maintain a clean center for enlightenment and strength. Avoid twisting truth or believing in lies. Always abide in the truth at the center of your being. Financial challenges and the need for truth. Those who engage in practices that permit difficulties in their finances often resort to various schemes to raise money. Living and embodying the truth is essential. He who is, has. Churches and monetary requests. Churches frequently solicit money due to their lack of inner light, compromising with worldly matters. True strength comes from not compromising with the world, but staying true to the light within. Digestive System and Joy of the Spirit Digestion occurs in the alimentary canal, where vital substances are picked up in the mouth and sent directly to the brain. Joy of the spirit acts as a lubricant, facilitating smooth bodily functions. The joy of the Lord is my strength, discerning spirits and spiritual joy. Discernment of spirits is vital, and introducing joy into the body involves lifting the mind to higher things. Pure thoughts are the best blood purifier, radiating positive energy. Discern the one true spirit. Pleura and its spiritual correspondences. The pleura's office is to hold the organs of the thorax in place and allow them freedom. Corresponding to wisdom and love, the pleura acts as an intermediary. Balancing wisdom and love is crucial for the pleura's perfect functioning. Diaphragm and peritoneum. The diaphragm controls the movement of visceral organs and plays a vital role in breathing. Its expansion and contraction aid organ movement contributing to health. The peritoneum and pleura work together, ensuring organs hold their place and perform their functions. Love of Pleura and Wisdom The love of the pleura is akin to the love of those in the center who cherish wisdom for its own sake. If there is love for the good and wisdom, the pleura remains healthy, holding organs in place. 
Love of good and wisdom keeps the body's members in place, preventing friction. Focus on wisdom and love. No need for struggle or strain to convey a message. Step aside, and the spirit will deliver the truth. The pleura's role is to bring balance between the heart and lungs. A healthy pleura of the mind indicates a balanced interaction between love and wisdom. Importance of a pure mind. Keeping the mind pure is vital. Adulteration in any form is cautioned against. Paul's warnings against false teachings urge us to stay true to Christ and beware of allurements away from the truth. Spiritual guidance and discernment. False teachings often come in enticing forms, but staying rooted in Christ is paramount. Avoid fortune-telling practices like card readings, astrology, and palmistry. The true path is through Christ and avoiding the antichrists already present in the world. Empowerment through Christ. As disciples of Christ, we possess the power of God. This work requires strength, not weakness. Only when our vessels are pure can we achieve our goals. By surrendering entirely to Christ, we gain authority and divine guidance. Purity of heart and mind. Purity of heart and mind leads to wisdom and strength. It's essential to maintain a single-minded focus on Christ, allowing signs and great works to follow. Surrendering to Christ brings assurance and authority. Personal transformation through Christ. Personal transformation through Christ leads to empowerment and the ability to preach the gospel, heal the sick, and guide others. The universal Christ can manifest anytime, anywhere. The Art of Spiritual Healing, by H. B. Jeffrey, emerges as a profound and comprehensive guide to fostering well-being and unlocking the transformative power of self-healing through spiritual practices. This exploration has unveiled the depth of Jeffrey's work, emphasizing the interconnectedness of mind, body, and spirit in the pursuit of holistic health. H. B. Jeffrey's approach to spiritual healing is not merely theoretical but deeply practical, encouraging readers to actively engage in their own well-being journey. The book's core philosophy, rooted in the belief that spiritual harmony contributes to physical healing, resonates with the growing interest in holistic health practices. The exploration goes beyond summarizing Jeffrey's work. It serves as an invitation for readers to internalize and apply the principles of spiritual healing in their lives. The integration of practical applications, exercises, and reflections empowers individuals to embody the teachings, fostering a sense of empowerment and self-responsibility for their overall well-being. Moreover, the exploration acknowledges the contemporary relevance of Jeffrey's insights in a world where holistic approaches to health are increasingly sought after. By bridging ancient wisdom with modern understanding, the art of spiritual healing stands as a timeless resource for those seeking to navigate the intricate relationship between spiritual practices and holistic well-being. You have reached the end of The Art of Spiritual Healing by H. P. Jeffrey. Throughout this audiobook, we've explored the essential principles and practices that can lead you to a path of well-being and self-healing. By integrating these insights into your daily life, you can foster a deeper connection with your true self, cultivate inner peace, and promote overall health and harmony. Remember, the journey of spiritual healing is ongoing and evolves with every step you take. We hope this audiobook has been enlightening and has provided you with valuable tools to enhance your spiritual journey. To continue receiving inspiring and transformative content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for listening and may you continue to grow in peace, health, and spiritual fulfillment.